Daily Devotion. It is Friday, and that means we have some jokes from the Bishop Boys. And so if you're just jumping in for the first time today, welcome. Uh, let me introduce you to the Bishop Boys. This is Henry. Henry, wave your hand in the air like you just don't care. Okay, you really look like you just don't care. And this is Jacob, <laughs> and this is Sam. And uh, we usually have three jokes, but Henry has chosen to take a break from joke this week. Is that right? Okay, you're joked out. All right, so we're going to let Jacob... <laughs> And Sam tell their jokes. And Henry, you and I can just laugh at the jokes. Does that sound good? I'll take that. I'll take that as yes. All right. So Jacob, you just go first with your joke, please. Why does the teddy bear eat dessert? I don't know. Because he was stuffed. Very good. The teddy bear was stuffed. Did you like that one? All right. Good. All right. So Sam, let's hear your joke. Uh, Dad, I have a question for you. Oh, what's that? Is February March? I don't know. Well, April May. Ah, very <laughs> nice. That was good. Good job. All right, guys. Awesome job. Y'all go find the puppy and um, do something with her while we do this devotion. Very good. Let's not step over the... Uh, you, you're good. Keep going. All right. That, watch out. <laughs> All right. So uh, thank you. The Bishop boys enjoy telling those jokes every Friday. So thank you guys for uh, letting them continue to do that as if you really have a choice in the matter. So you participate, so that's nice. So as you're jumping on, uh, let us know that you're here. Uh, say hello there in the comment box, and uh, we're going to jump in. So it's already Friday. We are in Colossians chapter 3, and uh, we're getting ready for Sunday. So just as a reminder, we're going to have uh, communion uh, this week as a church family on Sunday. We're kicking off a brand new series um, it's going to be awesome. So I can't wait to do that with you guys on Sunday. Uh, but for today, we're going to look at four verses, and we're going to talk about what they mean, uh, what they meant then, what they mean now. And this is starting chapter three. So we've been through two chapters so far. Uh, there's two chapters left. The start of chapter three is that uh, fun little word again, therefore. And as I've said, probably 15 times now. When we see that word, we always say, what is that therefore, therefore? So it's referencing what has previously been said. And so at the end of chapter 2, if you weren't with us yesterday, Paul kind of went into this diatribe where he was basically um, tearing down the arguments that these false teachers had been making and basically saying to these new Christians, like, listen, you don't have to do what they're telling you to do in order to fully experience Christ. That you don't have to add anything to the equation to experience the fullness of Christ. Like you are already in Christ. And he laid out a pretty compelling case. So if you missed yesterday's devotion, uh, you might want to go back and listen to that. And then in chapter 3, he's going to say, therefore. So now what he's going to do is instead of uh, what we saw yesterday, him taking the opportunity to kind of tear down the false claims that they were making, now he's going to take the opportunity to build up the truth, and that's a really helpful format. So let's dissect the false teachings, and now let's focus on the truth. And so yesterday was dissecting the false. Today is focusing on the truth. And so verse 3, therefore, in verse 1, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. So I wanted to read all four of those verses together because I think that it's one continuous thought that we can now go back and kind of break down and really see what he is saying. So he says, first of all, therefore, if you've been raised up with Christ, keep seeking things above. And this is really interesting because contrasting it to the false teachers that we talked about yesterday, they were con continuing to claim that there were things that you needed to do in order to really experience what it was like to really be connected with Jesus. And so they would bring in angel worship. So they would bring in visions. And this idea that the false teachers had were things you could do, whether it was through angel worship, whether it was through certain rituals, whether it was through uh, observing certain of uh, food, uh, abstaining from certain foods, uh, whether it was having a, a, sp a special vision, this is what would connect you to heaven. And what Paul wants the Christians to see is you're actually already connected to heaven. So you're not trying to get connected to heaven. You're already connected to heaven. And here's why, because you've been raised up with Christ. So you've been raised up with Christ. And so keep seeking the things above where Christ is 
seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on these things, not on the things that are on earth. So it's really interesting. The false teachers were saying, positionally, we're here on earth, and there are things that we need to do in order to get our minds set upon the things above. Paul says that's actually an earthly way of thinking. And what Paul's now going to do is going to flip it, and he's going to say, Christians, since you were already positionally seated in heaven, don't fix your things on what's below. Fix your mind on what's above. And what is above? The truth and the reality that positionally you are already in Christ in heaven. Now, when he says set your mind on this, here's what he's saying. Since this is true in a way that you can't fully experience yet, but your identity, your citizenship, as he says in other letters, is in heaven, let your mind, let your thoughts, let your heart, let your emotions flow from that truth. So rather than taking your thoughts and trying to get them to get focused up here, remember you're already up here and now let's let your thoughts resonate back down to your reality from there. You see how subtle that is, but you see how he's also invoking some of the philosophical tricks that the false teachers were using and he's using them against them. Paul was brilliant when he would do these types of things. <clears throat> so he says, set your things Set your mind on things above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So part of what we're called to do as Christians is to think with the purposes of the kingdom always primary. So we set our mind on things that are above. Heaven and our identity being in heaven, our citizenship being in heaven, this world not being our own, it should affect the way we think. It should affect the way we think about our daily lives. It should affect the way we think about trials. It should affect the way we think about uncertainty. It should affect the way we think about sin and evil and all of the things that happen in our world. And because we know our citizenship is in heaven, because we know we are in Christ, we can actually set our mind from that truth. So the things that permeate our thoughts don't resonate from what's happening here on earth. And then we take that and try to figure out how that plays into heaven. No, no, no. Our minds always start with the truth of where our citizenship is in heaven. And we allow that to now permeate and help us interpret, understand, deal with, cope with, wrestle with the reality that we face here on earth. Everything about what we know to be true about our identity in heaven, our future in heaven when we die, should affect the way we process, interpret, think through, and react to what's going on in our, in our world today, in our lives today. Why? Because we've set our things, our, we've set our mind on things that are above. And then he gives this really amazing promise. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. And this is kind of some Old Testament language. Uh, Dave, David would talk about this a lot, being, being sheltered, being hidden by God. It brings about it this connotation of protection. But there's also a reality here that I think is really amazing to think about, that our lives are hidden with Christ and God. And I think a practical application of that is imagine for a moment, and, and maybe, I don't know, this could be like a fun script for a movie, if all of the Christians who were on the earth could see each other in the way we will be able to see each other one day when we get to heaven. In other words, like just for the sake of a fun movie script, what if we could visually see each other in our heavenly bodies now, but the rest of the world always just saw us the way we look now? You'd be like, well, why is that like a, a fun movie script? Well, because the idea <clears throat> would be that that's hidden. It's hidden from everyone else, but it's not hidden from us. And in many ways, that is our reality now. Like we have a, an identity with God in Christ, citizenship in, in, in heaven, standing before God is secured, eternity is secured, but we're hidden from that being our experience that we can identify with until our earthly death. But that's what God sees when he sees us now. And we are hidden in Christ. And it's a pretty amazing thing to stop and think about. That that's really where our identity already is. And we said earlier in the book of Colossians that many times in Colossians, there's an already not yet dynamic at play. This is that again. 
So we're already declared righteous before God. We're already in heaven. We just not yet have experienced that. But what Paul is trying to help us see is this is what should drive our thoughts. This is what we should focus on. And remember, we're hidden in Christ. And then verse 4, when Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. And now Paul's bringing in some eschatology. And Colossians is one of the few letters where Paul actually does that, talks a little bit about the end times. So again, what's Paul trying to do? He's trying to contrast the truth from the faults, the lies that he talked about yesterday. And here's the truth. The truth is that because Christ is seated at the right hand of God, because we are in Christ, because we are hidden in Christ, because we will ultimately be revealed with Christ one day, that all of that truth, while sometimes seeming so distant and seeming so hard for us to really get our minds wrapped around, is true. And because it's true, that should give us the protection that we need from the false teachers who keep telling us there are things that we need to do to obtain what's already true. And so anytime the enemy tries to attack you by telling you a bunch of things that you need to do to obtain something that's already true, fall back onto the truth of God's word. So right now, I don't really feel like my standing in heaven is secure. Right now, I don't really feel like I'm in Christ. Right now, I don't really feel like that my life is hidden with Christ and God. Right now, I don't really feel like that eventually one day I'm going to be revealed with him in glory. Right now, I, I, I feel uh, pretty crummy. Right now, I feel pretty defeated. Right now, I feel pretty confused. Right now, I feel a lot of just anxiety and emotional turmoil. And oftentimes when we are dealing with emotions and feelings and thoughts that don't measure up to what's actually true, it's a reminder for us to take that to God in an honest way. We don't try to say, man, I got to get my thinking right. I mean, you know, I'm thinking about stuff, I'm feeling stuff that's not true. I need to focus on what's true. You know, we go to God and we go, God, my thoughts are consumed right now with lies. My emotions are consumed right now with lies. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, could you ground my thoughts, feelings, emotions in, into the reality of what's already true? And God is gracious so many times to just bring us back to that place of peace, to bring us back to that sense of calm, to, to get us back to a place of certainty, not because our circumstances changed, not because any of the things that were driving those emotions changed, but because the truth, the truth had a way of overriding those things that we were feeling and thinking. This is where God's word is so powerful. And, and I love how my Bible entitles the uh, chapter three. The title that my Bible gives chapter three is put on the new self. I love that. Put on the new self. Every day we put on clothes. And every day I think that what Paul, you know, this, as they were compiling this, put on the new self. God, this is what I feel. This isn't what you've said is true about me. Lord, help me to die to self, step into what's true, be robed with your righteousness today, putting on the new self, so I can face the troubles, face the turmoil, not give in to the false things that are going on all around me. So four simple verses that can really help us. And I wanted to stop there because guess what the first word of, of verse five is? Therefore, okay? So now he's, now Paul is going to sound like a, a, a courtroom attorney. Therefore, give us some truth. Therefore, give us some truth. Therefore, give us some truth. So I want to kind of break those up in each day. And so we're going to jump back in in uh, verse uh, five on Monday, which, believe it or not, Monday is June the 1st. Isn't that crazy? Already getting to June. So we'll have fun uh, talking about that on Monday. Hey, I hope you have a great weekend. Until then, don't forget, we've got our online worship gathering uh, this Sunday. You can participate here on Facebook. Uh, you could also uh, catch that later if you need to on our uh, YouTube channel. And uh, those services are always available on our website as well at vaughnforest.com. So let me pray for you today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend until we can reconnect on Sunday. And so, Jesus, we thank you that this is true. We thank you that Paul doesn't just tell us what is a lie. He also tells us what is true. And Lord, what is true right now is that we are in Christ. What is true right now is that you are seated at the right hand of the Father. And what is true right now for us is that that truth is what can drive our thinking as we set our mind on things that are above. And Lord, it's so challenging to set our mind on things that are above. For most of us, our eyes and our thoughts tend to go outward towards everything happening around us in our world today. And Lord, may we fix our minds first and foremost on you. 
May, may we fix our mind on kingdom purposes, seek, seeking you first in your purposes, in your kingdom, as you tell us in Matthew. And then let everything else fall into place. Lord, may we be reminded that we're hidden in you, that our identity is in you, that, Lord, to the rest of the world, we may just look like average, ordinary people that get passed over and, and, and not really ever paid much attention to and, and maybe even uh, spoken down towards every now and then. But, Lord, we know the truth, and the truth is we're hidden in you. And, Lord, we know that one day that's all going to be revealed. And so, Lord, we rest in that, and we are grateful for that. And while we're grateful for that, Lord, many of us just need you to help us get through today. And help us to find no shame in just simply making that declaration. To come to you and say, Lord, I need you to help me get through today. Help me to remember who I am in you. And help me not to get so consumed with everything going on around me, but to set my mind on things above. So, Lord, we thank you for this teaching. We thank you for the truth of your word. And we call these things in your name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Can't wait to uh, see you on Sunday in our worship service and then be back with you here on Monday. Have a great rest of your weekend. Until then.